Morning, Morning David. Another Love lovely day at Tolworth. Ah, it's lovely to see you here as well. Nice Thank to see you again. I'm so happy to see you. So, alright, good stuff. Thank well, you. Thank I, you. I've got a bit tent to see about you. I don't know. No, <laughs> good <it's>. acting skills. <laughs> no, it's nice to see you. Um, can I start by briefly going back to Bromley? Yeah. Because uh, we haven't spoken for a while. Um, a, a sort of consensus of opinion after that game seemed to be that Bromley looked very much like what we might look like in a year's time. Is that a decent. Oh, you think? I think that's what we've got to try to get up to, but Bromley's had seven eight yeah. seasons in this league to get where we are. Um, I was talking to Neil Smith, funny enough, and it took him three or four years to get used to the full aim and get full aim players in and all that, you know. But uh, certainly, um, is your phone gone off, David? Might have. Um, I so of course, we want to be like Bromley because Bromley's never top of the league and we want to um, try to emulate what they're doing, but um, you know, I thought we matched them all away by two mistakes. Yeah, I think that people's view who, who were suggesting what they were, what they did was that they were big, they were organised, each player knew their role within the team's overall structure and they played for 90 minutes and only scored right near the end. And, yeah. and it was a very even game, but they won it. And took they won it, I, but, but I think 95% of the game, teams in that league are like that. I haven't seen anybody do anything different from Bromley, to be honest, and um, or from us, to be honest. Um, some get it off a goalkeeper and play that way we like to get our wing backs out of the pitch and like to get our midfielders on the ball and the wing backs on the ball and I want my three defenders to defend, that's all I want to do. So it's different ways and different ways um, people do things. But uh, yeah, I thought probably was a very good save, I think we are as well. So I don't think we're far away from being, you know, um, challenging. Um, we're on the mid-table at the top 10 mark and I think we'll do that. OK, let's move on to last Saturday, South End. You must have been very pleased. Please, I, I went up to Chesterfield the week before um, to watch them yeah, with John John Katz, to be honest. And, um, you know, we, we felt as so though we could get down the sides and we felt as so we needed pace up top and um, you know, we battled hard, sloppiness at times, um, you know, I thought, you know, uh, was it, I thought we played um, better and lost, to be honest, I did, I, I, the honest truth is, I think there's only you of all where I've been really disappointed and I think the rest of the games have been quite good, even people say Horsham, but we had 78 chances against Horsham, um, which is an awful result that was, but the rest of it's been quite good, so um, I, I was confident good in the game. And um, you know it was good, you know great strike by Tav and you know um, great penalty by Max and you back him in his situation so I'm, I'm delighted yeah I was pleased and just gotta get back I'll go back to normal now like you know so uh, yeah, back to but you know training ground that's what we love doing you know so uh, ain't no faces anymore but the job David nothing you know I've probably done less interviews I've ever done I still love me community work and um, the cool walking and things like that and all the rest of it but you know if you think about it since I've been here you know but, um, I never had a single player when I first got the job, and um, we managed to get promotion. And then it was all about. So when, when I want to say I want to be manager at work, and I've, it's it's one of them where I feel so over four years I've had here, it's been quite hard, unjust to be honest. Because first of all, it's need money, and um, and we got promotion, and we're going to challenge at the top of the league, and not nobody mentioned that at all around the club. It was all about the development, and we're going to get this development. This and the club's skint if we don't get developed, and uh, we can't get promotion unless we get developed. And last season was all about COVID, I had to save every single penny going to COVID, then we've had another takeover and all that, you know, so there's been a lot of things that happened for years, so now I'll just come in every day and do the best I can for a working football club, and until they tell me anything different, that's what I'll do, and um, so I'm um, not in the pressure no more, not, I'll be working the socks off the day, I'll be coaching stuff to make it better, and um, that's all I want to do, so um, uh, uh, all the stuff like now, about are we going to be the next Bromley, or can we be, or can we, no, I just want to do the best I can for working until the time I decide or they decide something differently. Sure. Um, you, you said quite some while ago that, and we've mentioned this before s since then, that Johnson and Loza would both start when they were fit. Yep. Uh, you've also just said that you thought you could get at South End down the sides and yep. with a bit of pace. Yep. And uh, you changed the team accordingly. They did both start and they both did very well. They both did very well, yeah, they did done well. And, um, you know, the, the, the front two, because unfortunately we had George who was on the contract and Dwyer Drew who's back now, which is great. And then um, George is not far away. We're, we're left a little bit. You know, up there was them, them two playing all the time and done well at Indian Tavern and all that, you know, but we just need a, a change. Um, to, be, to be fair, you know, um, Loz has come in and trained very hard in the last couple of weeks, where I think in the last couple of weeks he's been properly fit beforehand, I can say little limps here, limps there. So um, he's got back in the team, you know, which is great. Are we looking for a centre forward? Yeah, we are, because I might be top heavy in different positions, how the change of shapes happened. And then we're looking at that, we are, so we're not daft, we're not, but I think Loss has come in and done well. We wanted to get him up against their um, centre half, so we wanted to get him down the sides. So if people wanted to run in, he'd done very well running at them getting across in for the goal for Tav. So um, it sort of does work, but if it doesn't work, it's on the manager's head. If it does work, it's, up to, it's down to the players who um, you know, listen to the information of what we give them and then fair play to the players. 
and uh, three centre backs seems to be the preferred structure this season. Is it going to stay like that? I don't know, no, because I always think, you know, because people see a five and we never talk about it as a five here. We always see it as a three. You know, like you know, three centre halves, Mark there, two centre forwards, and and we get the wing backs out of the pitch, attacking wing backs we can. Um, you know, then it means we can have two up top as well. Like you know, plus Max joining the third one. So um, we're like, like, but it is at the minute preferred. But we could change it against South End. A lot of times, um, so we knew South End were going to play like that, and we play like that. I think. 70% of the teams are playing like that at the minute, so you like to go a match against match, but it will be, um, especially if Tua Joe gets fit, which he's getting fit now, you might hit a goer to get the best players on the pitch, and sometimes that's a way to go, because the result was good Saturday, we will stick against um, Stockport, we've watched them once this Saturday, we're on telly tomorrow night, we'll have a look at it, but no, but it will change, it will change, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, is Casey destined to be a left-sided centre-back? I think that's why he wants to play. <laughs> I think that's why he wants to play and all that, you know. But he's, he was like me because I played in there and I was quite—I wasn't the biggest, but quite good in the air. And he's the same. But you know, um, we've got Joe Mac coming into it. We've got Louis, who's back off international duty this weekend. Joe Mac uh, had a bit of illness, so he'd be back this weekend. And um, you know, I think Blocky's not far away, so um, there's going to be a lot of um, ducky duck places coming yeah, up. Yeah. So um, it, and it depends on training. I always watch him in training now because in the past we've only have him one day a week on a Thursday night. Um, you can see him every day, so uh, every day you say, well, he's not on it, he's not on it, and because Loza was on it all week last week, he got in the team, sure. yeah, and, and Tyreek was as well. Good. And uh, you just mentioned Louis Annesley, um, I actually watched him playing against Turkey for Gibraltar, and he didn't play as a centre-back, he played in front of the back four. Who cool midfield? Well, in front of the back nine, I think, yeah. actually. Anybody can play for Gibraltar, yes, got, honestly, I, I, I weighed him up before, I knew I, I just weighed him up and all that, you know, I could get a holiday in Gibraltar and be classed as an international, <laughs> anybody can play for Gibraltar. So, it's, uh, so he's done well, it'll be nice to see him back, I think he's back Thursday, I think he's playing tonight, and then um, he'll be back Thursday, good lad, he's done alright, so... Uh, um, you know, him and Joe Michael had to try to get back in the team within a couple of years because they've just kept a clean sheet. And he's, he's just here for a month, will you think about extending it? Uh, I've got to talk to him and I've got to talk to Blackburn as well. Yeah, and um, you know, we'll have to have one or two of us um, to wheel and deal a little bit. So um, this is a lot of gods at the minute. I, when, when you get the Lewins, you're thinking, yeah, we're going to keep him for the end of the season. Then some things come up and you, before you know it, yeah. you want him back or we decide that we've got enough in that department. So, But what, one thing he has done, he's, he's done well for us. Good, good. And uh, you've been very, very light on loans this season compared to the past. Is that a deliberate strategy? Uh, uh, no, I, I, the honest truth is, if you look at it again, I'm not, you know, I've never had a choice. I've never had a choice of getting a budget where I can, at least I can get 17, 18 players in. I've always had to go down the route yeah. of getting like, loans for free and loans for this and loans for that. And that's all I've had to do since I've got the job here. And um, so, but you know, and I would see him on a first night and try to get him in some sort of structure for Saturday's team, we would with Ian and all that, you know. But, and, um, you know, but it's not like that now. If, if, it, if we do get a loan, it's got to be here full aim. We've made that stance from the start. So, um, yes, and because um, in full aim football, you need to play as a train every day. It's different in, in the last couple of years. If I was on the first, I would gamble on loans and just get loans in, and because that's the only way I could go. I don't have to do that this year. Sure. Okay. Complete change of subject. Uh, Rob Hemingway, you've obviously spoken to yesterday, I, I guess, um, says that uh, you told him that Max ran 13 kilometres. 13 kilometres, yeah. That's which is fantastic. The right. normal is about 10, 8 to 10, isn't I it? I know. Just shows you, like, these fests are where these days and all that. I go against them. Right, exactly. Him, but I've got to put my hands up there, and what a great effort by him. And he's, I think. Yeah, I, he's having a great season, Max and all that, you know, he really is having a good season because he's running around more, he's fitter than he's ever been, yeah. and all that, he's stronger. He's, uh, I think one thing, <laughs> the full aim has definitely benefited him again, because he used to be full aim, he's went off to come back to full aim, he's certainly got his legs about him. Yeah, um, I, I thought this was, I, I raised it because I was going to ask you about the vests really, do, do they produce any other interesting data, or is it the case that Clarkey sort of, Passes it all on to Ian Dyer, and you don't get involved too much. I get involved. Uh, no, I've, I've warmed a bit. Right. You see, it's it's a little thing. What's going to win football matches? What we do with Swan? How the lads come in? How we can motivate them? How we can get them on the training ground? Um, the, the strength and condition we do. Christian, what he's doing there. Clotty, what he's doing there. Martin, what he does. Or uh, and how the players are. But this is just another little string. But all I'm trying to see is just get the fest on. Because very interesting. I must admit, I've warmed a bit. Like where I can find out how many uh, how many kilometres people are running. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, and all that, you know, but that's not going to win you a game, it's going to help you win a game. So what I didn't want to do is just focus on one thing at a time. All these little things will help you win football matches, including that. So if I max the run 13k, it's a hell of a stint by him, to be honest, you know. Yeah. And plus to have a good game. It's pointless running 13k if you don't play very well. Sure. That's why I'm trying to get in between. Or it's pointless running 5k, oh, it's not pointless. If you run 5k and you score a hat-trick, 
it, it, it's, it's performances, but these little things help if I think the lads haven't put it in as much as they should do, then um, it will show up, especially in training. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, once again, on Saturday, we're facing one of these teams that has an average crowd of five or six thousand and therefore a, a commensurate level of income compared to us. Yeah. Um, but having said that, we played them late last season and in a terrible run, we got a draw up there. Good. So it just goes to show. Um, both ourselves and Stockport have won two in, out of the last five games. So this is a, I see it as a genuine chance to claim a big scalp despite their big budget. So. Of course, I know, that's what we're there for. And, you know, we've done it against the top teams at the minute. We're, um, you know, and we would have done it against the Maiden Heads if I'd have kept 11 on the pitch and things like that. So we know where we are. All we do is attack it. You know, we've had a tough week where, you know, we drew against Bromley on Saturday. We've got a massive game tomorrow night in front of a massive crowd. Then the M guys must prepare, you know, we should be more prepared than them to be honest. So um, it's um you know, but, but I'm not knocking play off or play, I think they've got the best in the league. But it doesn't happen like that, you know, and they when you get Rams and Wrexhams and all that, you know, fair play. If it, if we had the money here we would spend it and all that, you know. So it's um but I'm not for a game. Yes, of course. we we wanna we're not thinking anything anything else ball winning a game. Sure. Um one last football thing and then one small other thing. Uh you've you've fairly often recently not had a goalkeeper on the bench first of all what's the thinking behind that and secondly perhaps more interestingly who would go in goal if, if someone had the, to the thing about it is trying to be positive around the players because I felt so about the whole place wasn't when you lose a couple of games and you do it like you know then the second thing Smudge has had a little injury which he's, like, you've just said you've just heard him he's going to train yeah. today yeah. so uh, it was unfair on him and all that as well so uh, it's a two way thing there and he's able to clear it up now and all that you know but that's I don't know like, that's why I've probably got Nathan on the bench I think Nathan nothing would bother Nathan Collier so Nathan Collier would just come and be and go I think nothing would bother him at all there were some people may get nervous some people may panic and all that you know and stuff like that I think Nathan Collier would just step in there and not give him a care in the world and just do the best he can so I, if I was saying no probably Nathan brilliant a, a, an interesting and fascinating answer uh, you wouldn't be bothered good uh, last question then T tell us about fire walking uh, I was said with Dia Lake and um, it's me John a couple of us, a couple of people from the club done it uh, Malcolm done it and all like and, so, and, um, and it was like I was Oh, I was uh, mind boggling, like really, because at first, you know, I was doing planes and all, when I looked at it, I thought, because the fire was up there, but the bloke gets you in and sakes you up and all that, you know, and stuff like that, and off you go, and oh, it was all right. I, I didn't think it was, I thought it was a bit of a doddle, actually, you know what I mean? But when I, when I got it, I thought, oh, God, my feet are killing us, I've got blisters. Not one single thing, uh, not one single thing. So I'm glad we've done it, I'm glad we raised money for the hospice, and um, we've got a couple of, we had another one of Rod Stewart night on Friday night for the hospice down at Sutton Green Golf Club. That was a really good night. Um, this one, you know, um, we're done on the Thursday night. I think a couple of weeks' time we've got a gin night, which is great. I'm making fight of it. So it's a gin night, right. and um, you know it's it, it's very important as a hospice, you know. And we're not turning backs on that. And like you see, in the next couple of weeks, I've got a large going. I think it's next Wednesday or Wednesday after we're going to go around the homeless and give out food. Our Christmas times will be giving out Christmas trees to people. I want them to know what you have a half live if you like, you know, because sure, they yeah. get well looked after here. And it's, it's a fantastic thing being a professional footballer. But there is people out there who have got to find the money to watch us play. And there's, there's people who can't afford to watch us play. So we want to try to give as much back as we possibly can to the community and we'll continue doing so. People may say, oh, I'll do too much for it. No, I'll be judged on my soul. Like I've said, that's gone now. I'm not bothered now. I'm, I'm here to work every day. Um, you know, until uh, I can, um, hopefully for a long time. But the bottom line is, like, you know, there is people out there who do a lot of money, spend a lot of time, spend a lot of effort, come to support us, so we want to give something back. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time this morning, and uh, see you on Saturday. A pleasure. Okay. Please remember to like and subscribe to Woking Football Club.